Sure. <laughs> uh, welcome everybody to this month's Q&A. Uh, Jen and I are here to uh, address some of your questions that came out through um, our question uh, submission form that we sent out a couple days ago, and we're here to just give you general updates about the company, about the Taco 2, um, and just kind of make sure that anybody out there who has an Escapod uh, and wants to know how to use it better, or you're thinking about buying an Escapod, uh, we're here to uh, make that option uh, a little more clear and understandable for you. And um, we have about a page and a half of questions, so um, we'll just kind of dive right in. And Jess is going to read them for us. Yeah, I yeah. am. Um, to start us <laughs> off, do you guys want to give us an update on the battery charger replacement? Let them know what we went with and kind of what the plan is to get that out to our customers. Sure. Um, so we have been testing a couple different options over the last few months as far as um, an onboard battery charger that is capable of charging our dual six volt batteries. That's a 224 amp hour battery combination and the charger that we had previously wasn't quite powerful enough to get those charged to 100%. Um, so we have landed on um, a battery charger from a company uh, called Progressive Dynamics. Um, we've just finished up uh, building out the assembly for that. So it'll still be inside of the headboard like the NOCO charger was. Um, to kind of, as a, a, a little bit of a reminder to people, the NOCO still works great if you have a single 12 volt battery, there's no issues there with that battery charger. Um, so the Progressive Dynamics will go in a very similar location. It does require a little bit of more uh, material assembly in order to go in there. So we're working on shipping that out to everyone who has been waiting on that. Um, that will either replace your old NOCO or if you got a trailer in recent months and didn't have a battery charger installed at all, then you'll be getting that assembly. We'll be filming a walkthrough video of how to install that. It's gonna be a pretty simple um, drop in. You should only need to place a few screws in, in order to get the unit secured into your trailer. And we'll show you how to safely uh, connect that to the fuse box and then plug it in and you'll be good to go. Awesome, one other update that our customers have been looking for is um, an update on when swag will be available on our website for purchase. Okay, um, so as you can see behind us, we, we do have uh, an ever-growing collection of swag that's available in our sales and rental facility. Um, because we do all of the web design and development in-house, uh, one of our partners, Joshi, kind of leads the charge on that. Um, we are always kind of juggling uh, priorities there and when to get things you know, up and live. Um, it is definitely on our radar. We do use uh, a system called Shopify within our sales and rental facility to make that easier to buy. Um, the barrier to entry there to get that on the website is, is relatively low. Um, we're trying to get to that as soon as possible. Um, I don't think we have a definite deadline on that, but um, I'm hoping within the next, uh, you know, kind of before next season, certainly, uh, we'll have that available. And in the meantime, if you do want to purchase anything, um, please let us know. We're happy to kind of take that payment, um, probably get something shipped out. I don't think that would be too hard for us. Um, so it's available. It's just not quite uh, click to buy yet, but we're getting there. We have a meeting this afternoon, as a matter of fact, <laughs> for <laughs> next steps. Okay, we're gonna jump into questions that have come in. We're gonna go through them in categories. The first category that we've got is Taco 2 questions. Okay. Uh, first one we have is the FSR Odyssey Hardshell Rooftop Tent was initially listed as an option but has been removed uh, from the option list. Why is that? So, we were very enchanted by the FSR Odyssey Hardshell Tent when we first saw it. We loved the streamlined profile of it. It's one of the um, shortest, less thick, sure, whatever. It's only seven inches tall. Um, so we really liked how streamlined it was from an aerodynamic standpoint and all of that. Um, unfortunately, after further testing of uh, the tent and the compatibility with our trailer, we just found that where the ladder dropped down um, interfered with the doors on our trailer and wouldn't really make for the greatest user experience. So we pulled that from the site and have been going through different options to find a hard shell um, that really will meet, kind of check all the boxes. So it's still gonna be a really simple to use hard shell that can be set up really quickly and easily. Um, something that is more streamlined and aerodynamic than any kind of soft shell and has a, um, a, a lower height. 
Uh, and then also something that does clear that door and allows for easy entry to both your trailer and the tent once you get everything set up at camp. So we will be announcing um, very soon um, a partnership with iCamper and we will have the SkyCamp Mini and the SkyCamp 2.0 available for um, customers for both the original and the Topo 2. Is there a shower attachment for Topo 2 and is it easily set up to use as a full body rinse down? Yes. Um, and yes. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. Uh, so one of the things we've done with Topo 2 is really try to um, integrate things in a way that uh, is not only more seamless visually and aesthetically, but also functionally. And one of the things we're pretty excited about with Topo 2 is integrated into the entire water system. So you do have a mixer uh, in the back that allows you to choose between hot and cold. Um, you can easily quick connect a shower attachment to that. Um, and then one of Jen's great ideas was to actually mount that on the exterior via an integrated magnet within um, the actual body of the trailer. So this is something where it's going to have plenty of pull strength to actually attach, uh, to kind of adjust the height of and make sure it's kind of right for you. Um, but once you're not using it, it's kind of gone. And, and that's one of the things that we really did want to shift away from, you know, the original Topo to Topo 2 is not being so, um, I think, blunt with a lot of our a lot of our options and the way we design things. We really tried to make it so that when you're using it, it's there, it's accessible, it's effective, but when you're not, uh, it kind of just disappears into the design. So um, again, just to kind of reiterate the approach with Topo 2, we are not interested and, and did not take away functionality when we shifted from the original Topo to Topo 2. Uh, what we did try to do is integrate it better uh, into the overall design and, and make it more user friendly. Can you easily tap into or run a four pin wire connection to the rear receiver as bike racks begin to adopt built in lights, quad piston for example, for added visibility? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's, um, we can't answer definitively on that. Um, I, it sounds like you have your finger on the pulse of bike rack uh, technology evolution a little more than we do. Um, but I think what we're going to say, you know, what we can receive there is is the feedback is that you know this is something that our customers want this is something that might be uh, available on the market um, and it's something that we'll definitely consider as we continue to refine the design and development of top of two will there eventually be a trade-in program that would potentially be an option for our customers hmm. we haven't talked about that one um, what we have seen so far is uh, we have seen some Topo One customers uh, sell off their, their product in anticipation for the launch of Topo Two and put in a deposit for that. Um, what we can enthusiastically uh, kind of state is that we've seen amazing resale value of our product. Um, almost every time people have sold it within 24 to 48 hours and oftentimes for nearly 100% of their purchase price. Um, so. Uh, there is a little bit of scarcity, you know, in play here with supply and demand. Um, as we get bigger and bigger, we do expect to see more uh, escapades for sale on the used market. But as of right now, um, there is a thriving, you know, used uh, trailer market out there. So if you do have an escapade or if you do imagine wanting to upgrade your escapade um, after a few years to get, you know, the newest model, uh, we anticipate that you'll have no, no issue uh, getting that off your hands and finding some extra cash to put into it. Um, to piggyback off that, Echo mentioned earlier just um, you know competing priorities within our organization. And while we are rapidly growing, we're still very small for the amount of business that we are sustaining. So things like a trade-in program, it's definitely something that interests us and that we'll want to put some thought into in the future. But it's one of those that right now, like as simple as it might seem to just throw together a trade-in program, we have to be really highly thoughtful and considerate of how we go about that um, and just don't quite have the resources to put into that right now. Yeah, and it, as an organization, we're, we're not too keen on saying no to things, um, but we, we are pretty adamant about saying not yet. Um, we have really strong opinions about uh, how we develop our product and how we intentionally develop our company. And as a result, it does require making some tough choices to, to deprioritize certain things in order to give um, the necessary focus to do other things really well. 
and I think what that speaks to is the fact that you know we've focused up until now on on refining one single model, uh, and our our journey into Topo Two has been kind of new for us to kind of start that process all over again of what is the very best way to build something instead of how can we build something in the most amount of varieties to reach the most amount of people, um, because right now we we uh, we are still currently trying to meet demand. So I think for us, it is much more rewarding for us and more beneficial for the customer for us to kind of narrow our focus and do everything we do do uh, very well. Do do. Do do. Try to do. <laughs> uh, are doing. Um, will there be a base model price offered similar to Topo 1 for the Topo 2 line? Not yet. <laughs> what, I'm sorry, what is that question again? Base model offered for Topo Two, similar a, to a original Topo version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. Okay. It's something okay. again that is that is on our radar. When we um, went through the design process for Topo Two, because we were working to integrate so many things internally into that trailer, we really needed to be proactive and strategic about designing all of that in up front. Um, with the original, we were able to add things on because a lot of it was bolted onto the outside. We were trying to get away from that in the future when we were designing Topo 2. So um, we started with the higher end um, version of Topo 2. We have already had some conversations about what that would look like to have a more price point friendly version of the Topo 2. Um, you know, the, the body construction itself is simply far more expensive, so we will probably never have a truly, you know, price comparable original Topo feature set to, you know, a Topo 2 just because of the body construction. Um, but we are trying to think about what that next step looks like and um, hopefully have the Topo 2 be more accessible to uh, a larger number of customers. Will there be any other options for cooking burners in Topo 2? Other options than the one we currently have in there? Yeah, correct. Um, no plans right now to have that. Um, the main reason is, again, just to, to kind of uh, repeat what Jen just said. Um, in order to do something well and make it manufacturable and scalable, it has to be manageable. Um, and one of the things that we are trying to manage is inventory, is production flow, is um, the efficiency of a product as it goes through manufacturing line. And the more variables, it's the same reason we have four colors instead of 40 colors. Uh, I would vote for 40, but then we have to keep 40 actual inventory body shells in a warehouse ready to kind of move into the line at any given moment. Um, and that adds, it adds stress, um, it adds you know, more cost when it comes to just the, the facility in general that we need to operate. Um, it adds complexity to the amount of things that we need to keep in stock. Um, now we do have redundancies in place for all the products that we, we do you know, use because we need to have backups, especially given the kind of supply um, market right now. But um, when we are at our best and when the, the industry is at its best and, and when production is at its best, we are using the same product efficiently, consecutively, um, every single time. So what we do is really put a lot of thought into what unit we use. Uh, we vet that you know, manufacturer and that supplier, uh, make sure there's a good relationship there, and then we, we lean heavily on that. And, and we want to give them as much business as we can to make sure that we get the best prices we can and we can pass those prices on to you. So more complexity means more cost. That's kind of the basic equation there that we are trying to avoid. Awesome. So when taking toddlers, does everyone fit inside the trailer? Yes. Uh, this is true for both the original and for the Topo 2, though we do fit more comfortably inside of the Topo 2, like quite a bit more comfortably. Um, on paper, the Topo 2 bed is only a few inches larger, but the addition of the mudroom and then the additional headroom space, um, the arrangement of the cabinets, the shifting of um, the headboard has just created a much more open cabin space. Um, we went camping most recently down at Gooseberry. Um, it was me, Chris, uh, my son Hudson, who's just shy of two, and then our 70 pound dog. Um, we all fit comfortably inside the trailer. And um, yeah, it was quite surprising to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your best solution for bikes? 
Um, this customer's read some conflicting things about having them on the back. I'm just curious what you guys recommend. Um, we've had them successfully on the back and we think that that's a good solution. Uh, Taco 2 does have um, uh, a hitch designed that really is capable of supporting that very well. Um, the original Topo uh, does come with a hitch in the back. Uh, it does require an extension, so there's a little bit more manipulation you need on the original Topo in order to make sure that you don't have uh, vibration and movement contact between the, the bikes and uh, the rear of the, the hatch. Um, but as far as the functionality of that, uh, the way that we balance the trailer, um, the tongue weight is, you know, there's always a sweet spot for the tongue weight because you want it to uh, rest heavily on the hitch. You want to make sure that uh, your trailer isn't swaying behind you. And, and for that, you need to have the weight forward of the axle. So the only thing that we really kind of, um, I wouldn't say we caution against it, but two bikes on the back is a really nice number. Uh, if you do have a four up bike rack, uh, we've seen people do it, we've had renters do it, and they've come back with positive experiences. Um, what I tend to do is, is kind of put the max weight of anything mounted on the, on the rear around that 200 to 250 pounds, um, and that keeps you well within the range of acceptable for how the weight balances forward and, and rear of the axle. Um, I have a truck, I always put my bike in my truck bed. <laughs> Okay. We, we no longer have a truck, um, and I think one advantage of putting the bikes on the back the way that we have it is that once you get to camp, um, depending on where you're camping and where you're planning on biking, uh, if you're planning on going to trailheads in different locations, um, you can very simply move the uh, bike rack from your trailer onto your vehicle and then still be able to go around, bring your bikes to different campsites. So if you're trying to figure out is there a way to get um, bikes onto the tongue, yes, but then you're sacrificing kind of the versatility of being able to move the rack from the back of the trailer to um, your vehicle. Uh, it is a little less convenient as far as access to the hatch, but for us, that's always been kind of a worthy sacrifice in order to be able to put our bikes on our car and go to different trailheads. I think another thing when you set up at camp, um, both the original Topo and the Topo 2 have uh, side mount receiver tubes so you can kind of physically remove that from the rear and, and kind of station it on the side as well um, just to have your bikes elevated to have them accessible while still having full functionality of the hatch so um, we try to make it so that you can tow it well as well as you know use it well when you're when you're doing those activities perfect um, does Escapod trailers install trailer brakes after the initial install we are not currently positioned to do that. Um, that is something that in theory can be done by the right um, person, like bringing it to someone who does that kind of thing. Where would you take it? Where would I take it? Yeah. What kind of shop? I'm like, um, I mean, the words. Yeah, an RV repair shop uh, is capable of doing those things. Um, <clears throat> it's easy to go on a site like eTrailer and buy the right parts for that. Um, learn from eTrailer. They have a great uh, FAQ site, they, they're easily, you know, contactable to ask questions for things like that. Um, so there are definitely ways to do it. It requires a pretty low level of knowledge in order to kind of figure it out, but it does require some. So I think the level of engagement that we uh, expect from our customers is, is just the willingness to learn a little bit about that and maintain that, that trailer, um, you know, to a certain level yourself. Um, but we're happy to help with advice. We're happy to help with recommendations on where to go. Um, and then, just as worth saying, in the future, we do understand that as we get bigger, service is going to be a bigger part of our offering. Um, and what our hope is, is that, you know, that service is not always retroactive to, to something going wrong, but that's advancements as well, that's enhancements to the product you've made. Um, right now, we have been doing everything we can to increase production and make our product better. Um, but as we grow, we understand that there's an arm of our business um, that really does need to uh, exist not just to service the customer on the way up to getting a trailer, but um, the actual nuts and bolts of servicing the trailer uh, after the purchase. Does the car charge the battery of the trailer? The car does not charge the battery of the trailer um, on either the original or the Top 02. Um, the reason for that is that kind of charge is generally just a trickle charge. It's not a super powerful charge. Uh, when we introduced our Lightleaf Solar option um, a couple years ago, uh, we found that was 
a, a more ideal solution for charging when you're in transit because it will charge at a higher rate. Um, that solar panel, if you aren't aware, um, it'll charge while you are driving so long as you have it plugged into the trailer. Um, and it's removable and can be placed and oriented toward the sun to kind of optimize charging once you're at camp as well. So it's been a really good solution for us. Perfect, well that wraps up topo two section. So we're gonna move into original topo questions. First one we have is, can baby Broncos haul the topo one? Original topo. What's a baby Bronco? A baby assuming. horse. <laughs> like actually a baby horse or like a two door Bronco? Like I just got a four door Bronco. So I was like, oh baby Bronco is just a two door Bronco. But baby is it Bronco actually sport. like, I don't know. It's not a um, <laughs> I don't think we have to answer this question specific to Broncos, um, but specific to uh, tow capacity. So generally, uh, each, uh, generally, universally, every vehicle um, that can be set up by the manufacturer for towing is delivered with a tow capacity. Uh, what we recommend for the original Topo um, is, you know, comfortably above 2,500 pounds. Uh, I think that's the, the number we're using nowadays. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of gives you the most versatility uh, in towing. It's not just towing a trailer down the street, right? If you're on a flat blacktop, you know, uh, Prius could tow an original topo. Um, but the places we're trying to get you to go, you know, off-road, up and down mountains to locations that are worth going to, it really does help to have a vehicle that is set up to tow over 2,500 pounds. Um, I can't speak to the exact tow capacity of a baby Bronco, uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> But I, I do know that um, Broncos in general, from the manufacturer, from Ford, uh, are set up with tow packages. So I would encourage you to ask your dealer or go online and ask the community, which is a thriving community of Bronco enthusiasts, um, and just figure out what's right for you. Um, is the tongue jack easily interchangeable to one with wheels for added mo movability? I'm gonna let you go again, because I know you've mm -hmm. used you were closer to the um, decision to stick with what we have now, so you'll probably be able to speak to it better than me. Sure. Um, is it interchangeable? Um, the answer is it depends. Uh, depends on what model you use. Um, the biggest compatibility you know, concern is the actual cylinder that it mounts to and then has a pin that goes through to, to secure that mount on there. Um, now there's a lot of options on the market as far as tongue jacks, um, everything from, you know, $10, 5,000 pound jacks to uh, $500 motorized uh, wheel jacks. Um, we use one and the reason we use it is because it creates the most stability when you're actually set up a camp. Um, you do have two wheels that are free rolling, so if you uh, detach your trailer from uh, your vehicle and it's on a wheel and there's two wheels on the back and you forget to chalk it um, That movement that you're asking for, you know, garage movability can kind of turn into negative movability, you know uh, if, if you don't prepare for it the right way um, So we stick with just the standard foot jack um, We feel like it works really well for us in addition to having, you know, just a standard dolly Which uh, really helps us move things around the shop um, It helps any person with a flat garage, you know, move it around easier because you have more leverage with a, a, a dolly that's actually meant for moving a trailer. Um, like a lot of aspects of our trailer, you know, there are other products on the market. I mean, we were talking about the, the Odyssey tent earlier. Um, that tent is still going to be produced. It's still going to be out there. If somebody fell in love with that tent and you don't mind sacrificing the usability on one side of the doors, knock yourself out. Like, get it, use it, love it. Um, same thing goes with the tongue jack. You know, if you find one that's better, you know, suited to your needs, um, by all means, you know, give it a shot. Uh, I think the only thing I would caution you against is just make sure you have a tight fit there because you don't want the tongue of your trailer uh, to be unstable. Even if it's on flat ground in the garage, you definitely don't want it unstable while you're sleeping in it on rough terrain. Um, what is being done about the water entering the cabin while driving in the rain? <laughs> I want to answer this. One. Okay. Um, <clears throat> one of the driving forces of us developing Topo Two was our um, our desire to control the experience, to control the product, to control the quality, to control everything about it. We're control freaks. Um, 
With the original Tapo, the way that it is manufactured uh, is we lean heavier on other manufacturers. Um, and we have relationships with them where we, um, you know, the same way we negotiate price with them, uh, we call and we negotiate uh, on the details of the design. We negotiate on um, the product quality, making sure that they have, you know, uh, good checks in place. Um, the doors have been um, one thing that we realize as a small manufacturer that we don't have a lot of control over. But the ways in which we do have control, we have gone to the ends of the earth to you know, make sure that these doors, as they're designed, uh, are sealed tightly, do function well. Um, I know we've talked about this in past uh, you know, kind of Q&As, but I'll just, for those of you who haven't heard that, when we get a door in, you know, we check all the hinges, we check all the fasteners to make sure it's secure. Uh, we remove the window, we put the colored vinyl on, uh, we add some of the accessories like the magnet uh, catch that, that we have on there. Uh, we reseal it with better gasketing, we tape it off, we put silicone around all the edges, um, and then, you know, as we inspect it, we put it on the trailer, we make sure it's aligned, we water test it uh, as best we can within a static setting, like we can't drive all brand new trailers down the highway in a rainstorm, uh, particularly because it doesn't rain much in Utah. Um, but we go to extreme lengths to make sure that that functions well. Um, Percentage-wise, ratio-wise of the trails we have on the road versus the ones that we've seen experience, you know, those issues, uh, it is a, a notably small percentage. Um, not to take away from those who have experienced that, I know it's incredibly frustrating for you. It's incredibly frustrating for us. But the way that we are dealing with it um, is continuing to do everything we can internally, um, and that includes not only the the improvements that we make to every unit that comes in. But that, in the last few months, has uh, also increased to a, a rigid um, receiving checklist where we are evaluating every single door. We are noting variations in the manufacturing. We are noting uh, different gasketing that they put on, or whether they put it on one way or the other way. And we are giving active feedback to the manufacturer. Um, and if we see a variation that we think might compromise the success of that door, then we are stripping off that gasket, we are putting on new gaskets that, that we, you know, that we know uh, will work well. And in the rare case that we see somebody um, go through, you know, it is often um, kind of more inclement weather uh, or extreme levels of inclement weather, uh, or sustained, I guess is the better way to say it, even if it's just like normal rain, but you're driving through at highway speeds for, you know, four to six hours. Um, we've seen that water management system get a little overwhelmed and find its way into the cabin. Um, in, in rare instances, has that been really extreme? But in enough instances to cause concern, it's been notable. Um, so it's an ongoing thing that we're trying to uh, mitigate. We're trying to make sure it doesn't happen. Uh, it doesn't happen in almost all the trailers. And the ones that it does happen, uh, I can understand the uh, reaction. I can understand the concern from people who are considering buying a trailer. I do want everybody to feel rest assured that we are doing um, more than anybody else to make sure that these, these doors function well uh, and everything we can. And in the event that something does happen, um, we're doing everything post-purchase to make sure that, that it is mitigated. Uh, so that's college try and, and really feel like we uh, have, um, have gotten 99% you know, of the way there, but there is that 1% that still has us scratching our heads still has us frustrated um, with this as a, as a product, um, but you know, we're, we're, we're still a small company that can't do everything ourselves yet, so um, we're on our way, but in the meantime, if you do have an issue, we just ask that uh, you come to us first and you be patient and trust that we're gonna help you get it fixed. Perfect. Anything else? I mean, you mostly, I mean, you, you covered it. I don't need to add to it. I was just gonna share about uh, no, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there an option not to have a stove in the galley and just have a flat countertop? There is no longer an option to not have a stove in the galley and to just have a flat countertop. So um, per uh, one of the things Echo was mentioning earlier, just as far as complexity adds cost, uh, for us, we made the decision about a year ago to have every original Topo come off the line with um, a stove and propane tank already um, a part of the package. Um, that 
decision came from realizing that 95% of our customers were adding it on anyway. And the less variation that we have in our trailers, the simpler it becomes, the more standardized things can become on the production line, uh, the more efficient we can get, and um, the more cost savings can be passed back to the customer. So this is one of those um, decisions. We just kind of went with what we were seeing as the majority of uh, customer interest. and. I know that it might sound nice to have extra counter space, um, but having a stove you don't need to set up is also very lovely. And um, our galley is still really designed um, exceptionally well, one of the best in the industry. And there's still a ton of prep space on there. And with uh, the cabinet face that turns into that little side table, you get bonus uh, prep space with that table as well without needing to pack any extra tables or anything with you. So we feel like it's a really great option. I think the, the, another way to understand, you know, our decision there is that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a stove by itself is a simple variation. It's one thing I understand that, that the use case for it um, or, or against it for some people is really strong. Um, but when you think about the building of this product, the fact that it has hundreds if not thousands of decisions and parts that could be added or removed. Um, Jen mentioned the price savings that comes from having kind of a clear path and choosing one way of doing things um, and building with you know uh, uh, steps included in our, our production flow to accommodate that as well as uh, inventory storage. All those things definitely affect price. I think at the at the bottom line, another I'm all about equations. Another <laughs> equation is like when you make it simpler, you're going to get your trailer faster. You know, if we were still building trailers the way we were three years ago, um, my favorite example, and we really tried to do this, somebody wanted an oven in their pot, um, and we tried really hard. We spent a lot of time on it, and in the end, we just couldn't get it done. But we wasted, I mean, at the time, it felt like, you know, we were offering good customer service, and we were doing the best we could to give something, you know, that somebody wanted. Um, at the end of the day, there's some things that we can't give, and I think that you know the bigger picture story is that you know we really want to give you your trailer first and foremost as quickly uh, and as well built as possible. And and by limiting the options that we have and, and keeping things consistent, we both have better processes and training for people to build that one way really well, uh, and then they get faster at it. So you get your trailers. Will a, lith a lithium battery bank be an option over the stat standard batteries? for the original topic? Very soon, yes. But not yet. But very <laughs> soon. <laughs> uh, can you upgrade to a larger solar panel similar to Topo 2 for the original Topo? Uh, as of right now, we're not offering that. Um, it's one of the things that we have designed into Topo 2 to be specifically useful for the more um, the higher energy requirements that Topo 2 has. Uh, also, if you've noticed the way that we design those, um, what Lightleaf does is kind of mold those panels specifically to the profile curvature of the trailer itself. Um, so it's not necessarily a one-for-one -one swap there. Um, and, you know, to be honest, I know everybody loves the idea of more power. Um, it's one of those things where, you know, we don't offer a four battery bank because it's just not necessary. Uh, and we don't offer the 150 for the original Topo because for 95% of the use cases, it's just not necessary. Perfect, next category is service and maintenance. Um, is there any concern about mildew buildup in the water system tank over the winter even after winterizing it? Um, I think especially with the process of winterizing, I mean, generally speaking, no, there's not concern, um, especially if you are winterizing it. Part of the process of dewinterizing in the spring involves um, uh, allowing a water and bleach solution to sit in there, which would clear up in, um, any concerns of mildew. Um, do you have any other? I mean, we've, we've managed a rental fleet for three years. Um, we've, we've never seen anything that has caused us concern. If you have concerns about it, your concerns are totally valid. It's your experience, but as Jen mentioned, um, just as part of the dewinterizing process, flush it with a little bit of uh, bleach mixed into the water, let it sit for 15 minutes, flush it out, you know, cycle it through for another 15 minutes, and then you're good to go for your season. Okay. 
Perfect. How often do wheel bearings have to be greased and aligned? It would be nice if there was like a perfectly easy answer to this, the same way that I, you know, how often I have to change my tires, you know, it would be nice if it was once every 100,000 miles, but it changes based on how you drive. Um, our number, which Jen seems really eager to, to, to say, <laughs> to say, so I'm gonna let her take this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just gonna make this really easy. Go to our website, um, look at our manual, all of the specs are in there. It's different for the torsion axle versus the free ride suspension. Um, as far as like greasing things, the more frequently you can grease anything that requires greasing, the better. Um, I believe the number is somewhere around 6,000 to 10,000 miles. Um, we use Dexter bearings. Um, Dexter is also the same manufacturer that we uh, use for our torsion axle. Um, all of the specs are outlined in the manual. We link from our manual directly to their manual. So I just don't even feel like we really need to speak to that. As far as alignment of the free ride suspension, alignment is something that you should be in the habit of checking periodically. Um, we do have a guide also linked um, from our manual, which you can access from our site, um, that walks you through the process of how to do the visual inspection um, and how to take measurements to see if your trailer is in or out of alignment. It will give you recommendations for how to torque um, the um, the spindle bolts in order to maintain alignment if everything is looking good and aligned, which we hope it is. Um, and if it's not, you can contact our team and we'll help you figure out how to get your trailer in somewhere for service to have an alignment done so that everything is functioning um, as it should. One additional thing there, I just want to call out um, some advice that was given by uh, Zach, our, our service uh, specialist. Um, he basically said, Anytime I'm towing anything, every time I stop for gas, I just go and I touch the bearing. I just, I touch it, I touch around that area. If anything is excessively hot, that's your cue that like something needs to be done. Um, and I think what that lends to is just this idea that part of ownership of anything new, of anything that requires maintenance, you know, vehicle requires maintenance, our trailers require maintenance, um, and part of that maintenance process is just developing good habits. Um, and I think that that is a great habit. I would encourage everybody who owns a trailer or rents a trailer from us, every time you check or you get gas, just check on that. Uh, give a visual inspection of everything. Um, every time I pull away with a trailer, if I get in the driver's seat and I realize that I haven't physically checked the three locations where I know hitch pins should be to make sure my trailer is fully connected, I stop, I get out, I count one, two, three, and then I get back in and I'm, I'm much more comfortable towing that trailer. Um, same thing goes for alignment. You should never pull your trailer out of the garage or out of the driveway um, without checking the alignment. It's just a good thing to do. Um, lug nuts, just a good thing to do. It's going to save you a lot uh, of hassle. It's the whole measure twice, cut once thing. You know, just a little bit of preparation, a little bit of awareness uh, can go a long way in making your experience a lot better. Perfect. For a customer that has their Dometic list, um, living in the tongue box, do you have any remedies for venting it? They're encountering a smell when it gets really hot and they're encountering it in warm weather. So do you have any solutions for that? Um, offhand, uh, no. I don't have an immediate solution. What I would encourage you to do is to either email, I would just email our support team. You can email us at support at escapod.us. Um, that team will be able to um, address this on an individual basis. It's not something that we have um, heard of before, so we'll definitely want to make sure that we're looking into it and guiding you the best way that we can. Perfect. Next category is all things money, payment. Um, is there any ideas or thoughts about having a monthly payment plan that could help people beginning at the order and finishing at delivery? Um, there is definitely a lot of thought that has gone into financing and how to better service um, a broader customer base. Um, it's one of those things, like we mentioned earlier, Jen mentioned that you know when we're prioritizing the things that are most important for our business right now, um, it just hasn't made its way to the top of the list yet. Uh, I don't mean for that to sound insensitive. I certainly don't have the cash to throw down for an escapade, and I would love uh, a payment plan. Um, 
but uh, we're, we're, we're still getting there. And one of the main ways to get there, uh, especially with Topo 2, if that's what this question is about, um, is we are going through the process of really standardizing and documenting all the aspects of how we build a trailer, what its dimensions and features and weight ratings are, all of that stuff so that we can package that up, submit that to um, the proper agencies that uh, do things um, that are kind of part of that multi-step process to get to the point where you have some certification that makes financing a trailer a lot easier. Um, and that includes everything down to resale value and you know that you have somebody come in that's checked you know all the fire protocols to make sure that you're doing things the right way and assign on the dotted line so those are all things that's part of a bigger initiative that we are well on our way towards um, completing uh, but we just haven't gotten to that point yet where you know we've done all the bureaucratic paperwork to, to make financing really really easy for people that said a lot of people have financed a lot of people have done it successfully they have good relationships with their financial institutions um, and you know, if you are having trouble, please contact us, contact sales. They, they can help you through that process. We can talk directly with your bank and help them understand what our business model is. Um, we're here to help you and make this accessible because we do want to get an escapade in everybody's hands that want, wants one. Um, but we don't internally have a financing plan quite yet. Um, are customers able to pay cash? Cash money. Like stacks like, on stacks on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you bring me thirty thousand dollars, <laughs> I think I have to make you sign some like extra forms or something. Isn't there something about that? Yeah, I would think that. Uh, <laughs> we just, have to like document. We that. have to document because it ends up being questionable. Questionable because it's over ten thousand dollars. We don't want to yeah. do that. Just write us a check. Yeah, that that's kind our, of our, our, <laughs> most of our customers <laughs> do pay by cash in the sense that they pay by check. Right. Or ACH is our most common form of payment at this point. So, yes. Yeah. ACH is great. It's super, super easy on the customer side. It's more easily uh, receivable, trackable, all that stuff. It just helps the whole process go better. So if your sales team sends you an ACH link, don't hesitate. Ask questions if you need to. But it's a very safe, secure way to pay. Uh, we've been doing it a lot. We love it. You'll love it. <laughs> Kind of just a other question that came in is, are there any escapades in Australia? Can you talk a little bit about international purchase? Oh. Um, there are not. You know, early on in 2018, you know, I had about 10 months of correspondence with a guy who wanted to buy a trailer in Australia, but he, he ended up not getting there. Um, we've had some that have been, you know, in Europe as well, people who've really gotten far along in the process, but we have not been able to prioritize uh, the shipping and logistics and payment complications and all of that. Um, we're prioritizing domestic expansion right now. Um, that said, if there's a really serious buyer who is willing to kind of, you know, the same way that we had with customers in Canada, who have been amazing, all of our Canadian customers, um, one in particular, did all the research and sent it to us. And if you look right now on our FAQ to say, what are the requirements for coming into Canada with an escapade? That is their email verbatim because they did all the work and they made it easy and then we got them an escapade. Um, Jen will complete this. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the main difference between the Canada experience, um, which was incredible and has been very helpful to other Canadian customers after, so Thanks, thank Amy. you again. Thanks, Amy. Um, Australia does have some um, design requirements, so down to things like how the frame is constructed and how the, I think everyone needs to have like a, a tongue break and that sort of stuff. So there's it's a little more complex with Australia because it would also require some design changes on our trailer. Um, so if we have someone who wants to pay for an engineer to make those design <laughs> changes and wants to hit us up. Um, but yeah, it might take a little while. Like we still have um, a nine to 10 month uh, lead time on both of our trailers that we offer now just domestically. Um, so international is something that we have flagged, but definitely flagged for later. Yeah, thanks it's, for your it's, interest. And it's we're fun. and we're interested in it. I mean, our, our ambitions for this company are definitely not confined to you know the geographic boundaries of North America. Um, but we got a lot of growth in a lot of areas before we get to that point. Going as fast as we can. 
Well, that wraps up all of our submissions that came in. Cool. Do you have any notes or final thoughts to add? I just want to say thanks to everybody. It's been such a crazy year <laughs> in a lot of ways, but it's been incredibly exciting for us. Uh, we've got to know so many more of, of you, our customers, and we are constantly doing more. Um, Jen's team has been incredible at really developing connections and communities with our customers, and um, it just means a lot that uh, you've helped us grow to this point and helped us launch a new product, and um, we really are indebted uh, to all of you. So thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays.